What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk. Ken Zilling is a chameleon and villain for the trailer. Get away. Back on Corpse Party Blood Drive. Man. It's the same day as last episode. I I really am just kind of addicted to this game. We're getting into Blood, blood Drive Chapter 9, Imperator. Ah, oh, dang. I should have spoke. Give a little relapse. Recap. Last episode, Misuto was killed. We learned that Satsu... Misuto basically, we found out that Yuka is trapped in the bomb shelter and is and she's being used as like a gateway for the Nirvana's core to enter the Book of Shadows. Misuto escaped, stole Ayumi's Book of Shadows, but when he ran downstairs, he was killed by Satsuki, who was found out to be a member of Martuba's tomb. And Magari stole the Book of Shadows off of him. We currently have no clue what he's doing, but the rest of the gang are on their way to save Yuka. Now we're getting into chapter nine. What is this? How has the school completely changed like this? It's just like chapter five, bro. When we finally stepped out and the entire school was completely different, the Nirvana's encroachment is growing by the moment. We have no idea what's going to happen next. You all need to be on your guard. If we can't track down this gremlin, we should be able to figure out where Yuka is too. Right, let's hurry up and then and find her. We'll save you, Yuka, I swear it. Goodness. I like being able to play as so many characters at once though. I really like that. That's a really... Man, I did not see that. Okay, so we don't really have any doors we can enter anymore, I see. Blue light that hung over the corpse disappeared. Alright. He might have lost sight of us. Did he? No, 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 did he? Hold on. Oh, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Misuto told us about how, you know, every time we. Misuto told us about how every time we um exercise the spirit, we're, we're, we're just killing a human. It's your fault I died. Please give me your body. Nah. He told us about how every time we exercise the spirit, we're just stealing the. Uh, we're just killing a human, but I don't really care. If they're coming for me, I'm, I'm coming on them. You feel me? The world you know is gone. Oh dang, I got trapped. I got caught by one of those for the first time ever. That's the first time one of those actually caught me. See so, now, how did you even see me? Hold on, let's go this way first. There might be a nice little sexy item to grab. There wasn't. How is your skin and bone soap even running for that long? Miss Kuan glanced at the watch on her left wrist. The digits displayed on it were counting down. That old bomb shelter. It was this way before, right? Yeah. And this door. It's the same one I saw in my vision. Bro is messaging me. What does he want? The girl in black, the gremlin. She ripped the boards from it with her bare hands and went inside. After that, everything went dark and that's where the vision ended. Let's head in then. Kishinemaku. <laughs> Kishinuma, are you worried about Shinazaki? Huh? I yeah. It's very kind of you to show so much concern for Yuka Mochita and join us in our efforts. But I assure you we're fine. Won't you please head back? No. She's okay. No, she's not. Another earthquake? The nirvana is expanding, and the school is straining under the pressure. The Sephiroth of knowledge is very close to activating. Can you stop it, Ayumi? 
That which resorts under Nirvana's core is most likely something beyond the scope of human understanding. She's tougher than people give her credit for. She's got more guts than this school. So I'm going to keep believing in her. You're right. As, as much as Ayumi disappoints me every single time, I, I, I do agree with Yoshiki. I, for some reason, I always find myself putting my trust in her. I always find myself having faith that she's going to do right, no matter how much she disappoints me. So I, once again, I have faith, bro. I'm going to stick with it. Miss Kuan match Kishinuma's smile. Then let's go. We have to stay sharp here as well. Don't gotta tell me twice. Can't believe we're gonna face off against somebody even more dangerous than Sachiko. But whatever it takes, right? That's right. Yeah. Are you alright, Ayumi? The book. If I don't have the book, I... Ayumi, grab onto my shoulder, okay? Alright. We gotta go take care of business. Ah, my man Yoshikazu! I don't believe Sachiko's really gone, though. I feel like she's gonna pull up at a very clutch time. What's with these? It's like magma's flowing beneath our feet. I'm about to say, are we taking damage? I don't think anyone's died in this game so far. Like none of the, no, like no important characters. You know, like no main characters I don't think have died in this chapter. Satsuki had, was what, like, Satsuki would have been the first, but it turns out she wasn't human to begin with, so it doesn't matter. She didn't actually die. Then it would have been Aiko and everybody else, but you know, we kind of reversed time on that. We really finna have a Disney Channel ending. I'm not complaining though. Thank you, Aiko. I'm feeling a little more oriented now. I can walk on my own. There's something wrong with the school, isn't there? I wonder what's going on. Yeah, something's off. Where did Misuto run off to? I need to retrieve the book from him right away or something terrible will happen. Ayumi Shinazaki. Magari? So you've lost the book and reverted back to an ordinary human being once more, have you? I could kill you very easily now, you know. No need to be on edge. Here, I got your book of shadows back. I was about to say. I was kind of scared that she would betray us. Oh, okay. She might be betraying us. I tried to grab it, but Magari pulled it away at the last moment as if taunting me. I told you before. I was ordered to retrieve this. The plan was to guide you from the shadows and steal the book as soon as you got a hold of it. Really, I'm no better than Misuto. I am without a doubt your enemy. You really should kick that nasty habit of trusting people so easily. No. Though, there is one difference between that wretch and me. I'm hoping to see a little more from you. Ideally, I'd like to see if someone else will be born into this world who won't bore me to tears. Kind of like Naho was. This is the thing Naho always wore. That's right, it's a barrette. I found her body in the custodian's closet. Let me see that, Ayumi. Aiko snatched the hair clip from my hands. Naho! 
Can you hear me now? I could close her eyes and put the item next to her ear, but after a few moments of silence, she just started to break down. <laughs> she hugged the star and began to cry. It's a spirit item. Aiko told you about those Denishi. Articles belonging to the spiritually gifted like Naho often trap their spirits and serve as vessels for communication. Anyway, here. You're the only one who can make full use of it, so you can have it. For now. Though search, though search me whether I'm doing you a favor or not, I may have just sealed your fate. A guard flashed me a cold smile. You do know the history of the, of the book, right? Like how it was born? Yeah, I heard about it from Sis. Well, you're now gonna have to confront and seal away the Nirvana itself, I guess. In other words, you'll be pulling the core of the book, its very will, back into its pages. It's all, it all began with the genocide of a certain group 300 years ago, with the souls of the witches who were massacred in that famous witch hunt. Legend has it they communed with the devil and gained an immeasurable power to curse the world that had betrayed them. And you're gonna have to stand face to face with that power. Best case scenario, you'll go totally bonkers, and, but I doubt you'll get off that easy. Of course, if you fail, then Nirvana will spread and the world as we know will be finished. So good luck, I guess? I'll pray for your success in getting the core back into the book. Oh, one more thing, though. You probably already realized this, but this dimension isn't heavenly host any longer. It's now a physical manifestation of the curse from within the Book of Shadows. No clue what's gonna happen in here, so careful now. Magari, you're still our enemy, right? So why are you helping us? Because everything got fucked up. You saw those red magic symbols drawn all over the school? Those were black magic spells created by members of my order. They came here of their own accord without being ordered to by any elite like me. And every single one of them got killed off for their troubles. They were literally in pieces by the time I got here. Like I said, fucked up, right? It pisses me the hell off. The elders sent me here to investigate, but then they went and sent in another investigation team behind my back as well. The old hag that found at the Martubas has clearly lost her marbles. And because of that, the black magic circles here in here has been boosted out of control. The gremlin and the Nirvana have reacted to it and gone berserk. And now guess what? End of the fucking world. It was a lot more fun when I was going up against you three. You, Saika, and Naho. I'm thinking it's about time I leave that shit for Brain's order once and for all. Anyway, I still have some things to clean up, so this is goodbye for now. I asked the book how to go about meeting the Nirvana, though. It's in the center of the world. I, don't, I hope Magari doesn't die. This is my responsibility. You stay here, Aiko. You sure you shouldn't wait for Kishinuma and the others? I'm sure. This, more than anything, is a situation I don't want them getting involved with. And I know if they were here, they'd insist on getting involved. You need to meet up with everyone and get out. Tell them I have the Book of Shadows, so I'll be fine. This can go either one of two ways. This is either going to be Ayumi's very first time taking care of something on her own, and that's going to be like a big moment for her. Or it's going to be something like, um, what it is. She, once again, she's making the mistake of not relying on other people, and it's going to screw her over, and everybody's going to have to come in and remind her, like, we need help. She really thinks she Higurashi for real. Yeah. No, I'm coming with you, Ayumi. Oh yeah, Aiko's gonna die. Aiko's gonna die. Why? It's gonna be really dangerous from this point on. Didn't you hear what Magari was saying? 
It's for the it's the first favor my sister ever asked of me. And I don't want to let her down. But I'm coming with you whether you like it or not, so don't argue with me. Alright. I'm gonna leave a note then. The Nirvana is not nearby. Will you guide us to it? It must be in the main building. Come on. Ankles. Oh my goodness. My thing is... Bro, stop! You brought it on yourself. Save me! Shut up. Ew, she's ugly. I hate that stupid gremlin, dog. You got it. I'm gonna go about my day. Don't worry, little man. Oh, man, this music. Yo! Naomi. Who was in the stew? <laughs> Naomi, I'm gonna go butter up my pooper with it real good. Shinohara? No one was there. But further back in the hall, I heard the sound of someone running. What's wrong, Ayumi? I just heard a friend's voice. They best stop playing with my heart, bruh. Almighty God, cleanse this child's sins. One was an angry, judgmental male voice while the other was female. Fortunately, the only entrances into the room were all sealed shut. The doors were affixed to the wall like models. They showed no indication they were ever meant to be open. I hear someone in there. Someone's still alive, maybe? It could easily be a trap, though. Still. What, are you gonna go in? I mean, it's not like we can go- we, It's not like we can go in, anyways. Yeah. All right, now that we've got Misato's ugly face off my freaking save screen. Woo! Oh boy, did I get lucky there. For real, bro, who was in the studio? Oh, what? I can go inside Makina's apartment? Once again, that's your own fault. I don't... Like, stop running into my freaking talismans. You're wasting them. Oh, down here. In the hallway nearby, I can hear the sounds of footsteps accompanied by a strange snapping noise. Residual spirits? I remember. I heard about this from Hinoe. Spirits normally can't speak unless they've amassed enough spiritual energy or hatred. Seiko has no hate in her body! Seiko has no hate! So they communicate unconsciously. Memories of past events that meant a lot to them are, be are played back over and over again like they've melted into the walls. Shinohara, are you there? I felt a tear stream down my cheek, but that was my only answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you've lost your existence. I never could have imagined something like this would happen. 
The repeating sounds of the footsteps unchanged from before somehow seemed like an answer. And for some reason, I found it oddly comforting, like she was my guardian angel. I'm going to do something about it, okay? And if I die, I'll come back here again and apologize. I very strongly felt a presence right behind me. I quickly turned my heel to catch sight of whoever it may have been, but surprisingly, unsurprisingly, no one was there. Oh, Yashiro-sama? Something's following us. Is it a spirit? I'm not getting any malicious feelings from it, at least. Come on, let's go. Come on, Seiko's with us, man. This is Makina's room. Where are we? It's Makina Shinazaki's room. What? We were just in the school. The Nirvana is a melting pot for the thoughts and feelings of many different kinds of people. When the connections among the closed spaces get twisted, these sort of things do happen. Put simply, you could think of it kind of like a spirit barrier. I feel like I'm losing my mind. There's something drawn on the blackboard. It's a picture of three hanged corpses from left to right. They appear to be a king, a soldier, and a commoner. I got another steel axe. I have two of them. It is ahead. The door is locked, it won't open. Ayumi, there's a seal here. Is that what's keeping the door closed? I'm afraid so. Let's search elsewhere and see if we can find some way to remove it. Of course, y'all gotta make it complicated. I saved, it's fine. I'll peer through. I already saved. Oh, dang. Don't get yourself killed. Don't get yourself killed. What'd I tell you? You see, Misato tried to make, not, make Ayumi feel bad with the whole, like, every time you exercise the spirit, you kill somebody. But he didn't realize I'm playing as Ayumi. So she does not care. There were three corpses in this room all hanged. The left corpse seems to have been dead for quite some time, as it had just begun rotting. The middle corpse seems to have just died, and the one on the right was already a skeleton. Beneath the three unfortunate souls, something had been scratched into the floor. 2309-1405. No B. N O B L E L O T. Some kind of cipher, perhaps? New seems somewhat frayed. With the right tool, the body could be dropped to the ground fairly easily. Axe cut through the rope handedly, but it was too rusted to do much more. It more or less fell apart as soon as the body dropped, rendering it unsuitable for any further task.
The eyes of the still hanging corpses suddenly began to glow. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Then suddenly, the body I dropped off nonchalantly with seemingly little effort immediately and without warning it lunged at me. You got the book of shadows and you let that happen to you? You got the book of shadows and you let that happen to you? Lock in, Ayumi! Tight fit, but I think I can squeeze through. Should I go for it? The book is growling. Does that mean I shouldn't? You weren't actually thinking of going in there, were you? No. I am curious. But I don't like the idea of putting myself somewhere my movement is that restricted. What are you doing? That's completely reckless, Ayumi! Forgive me, please! I'm not a witch! I slowly squeeze my way forward, wedging myself in a gap beneath the floorboards of the next room next door. The room from which I heard the voice of this unfortunate sounding woman. Lord, that's spoken! I made it, I was underneath the room. As far as I could tell, I managed to slip in undetected. There was a light on inside, which I made it easier to get my bearings. And there was a fairly sizable hole in the floor above me as well, making it easy to observe what was going on, albeit from a less than ideal vantage point. When we threw this girl into the lake, she sank. This proves the impurity of her spirit. Maybe she doesn't know how to swim. No, I just can't swim. Excuses. Oh, almighty God, grant this child your divine forgiveness. Cleanse her soul with the flames of hell. Hell is not forgiveness. This is the Lord's intent. He shall protect us. This minigun of the devil shall be struck down. Who's there? It came from this way. I instantly regretted having raised my voice. The villagers were now staring directly at me. She's here! One of the beast minions! Pull her out! Yes, father! At once! Let me go! No, no! Conniving Cretan! If she is a certain within the dark one, there should be a mark of the witches upon her! Heavenly Father, Almighty God, take mercy on this impure soul! On her foul neck! The villager pointed at the scar left behind from the incident at Yoshi Shinazaki's place. Eliminate the heretic in his glorious name! Silver knife. Oh my goodness. I blocked his advance with my hand, but he kept driving it at me full force over and over again. Each time he swung down, the knife pierced my hand completely, and a fresh wave of excruciating pain shot through my entire body. Each stab made it exponentially harder for me to put the necessary strength into my arms to continue shielding my head. All right. That was one of the better wrong ends, honestly, that I've come across. I don't, I think I've truly really just been playing this game like really solid. So a lot of the wrong ends just haven't, I just haven't been getting a lot of wrong ends because I've been playing the game too solid. I know I cut him down first. Don't cut him down. The sound of a lock releasing echo from somewhere in the distance.
That was a pretty easy puzzle. I thought I needed to cut them all down in a specific order, but I just needed to cut those two down. This place is so trippy, man. I really like that, though. I like it a lot. I feel like having most of the rooms go to, like, some random place was really clever. I saw it last second. I saw that last second. Who is this? Name tag rest beside the corpse. Martuba tomb researcher, Rina Hakusen. Unknown large chunk missing from left breast to left arm. Seemingly eaten wild beast. I didn't see that, all right. Who are that darkening? I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. They put a trap and then they leave a bandage as the prize for making it past the trap because they knew you were gonna hit it. They knew you were gonna run into it and get hurt. It is ahead. Let's go. Okay. I wonder if Mochita and the others were able to save Yuka. What a terrible smell. It's a lot different in here than when we than it was the last time we came to this school. Yeah. So I'd rather not think about that right now. Hey. Martuba's tomb researcher. Unknown. Everything from the abdomen is missing. Michael. Blood out, stab wound, and abdominal region. Mia. Endort septic shock. Tobirada. Looks like the road ends here, at this door. Be careful! Dang! He's missing everything. Removal of IV and knife. Yoshiki's taking charge because he's the GOAT. Woo! Okay. Beyond the red door, we found ourselves in a large open space. The spell of blood and antiseptic immediately struck our noses with incredible force, so thick that it almost felt like we were stepping into a vicious liquid environment. This certainly wasn't the underground bomb shelter we were expecting. Rather, it was more or less a torture chamber, a labyrinth of terrifying pain devices and prison cells. The walls were spotted liberally with dark blood stains, and the general feel of the room was absolutely horrific in every conceivable way. How unfortunate for you, but that is the mark of the witch. <laughs> Sounds of deep, all encompassing sorrow and rage echoed from every corner of the massive space. Some of the screams and moans of sadistic pleasure. Seemed to be coming from right in front of us, though. The room was quite dark and there was no visible presences around us. It really did sound like people were being tortured right where we stood, though. Just crossing the threshold into the room was mentally taxing beyond anything I had ever experienced before. It was downright painful, in fact. Instantly bringing tears to my eyes. Yuka! Hang in there, we're coming! What is this place? I don't know. But these things all over the rooms really look like medieval torture devices to me. I hate to think of Yuka being stuck in a place like this. Damn it all. Yuka! Say something! 
ゆかーWhen the darkness came, the sound of a metal wheel or gear, gear turning. Satoshi shone his light in a general direction from which the sound seemed to originate. But the only thing there was a wreck, as in the torture device used to stretch and tear a person's body. It was a highly disturbing sight, but fortunately no one was tied to it. We all let out a collective sigh of relief. Despite being empty, however, the torture implement began spinning in place. Blood was flying everywhere. What is this? This stench! It's blood, isn't it? You mustn't stay here for much longer. We need to hurry. No argument here. Ooh, I like this top-down perspective. This cold. My tuba's tomb researcher Sakuya. Tortured and decapitated. Akiko Yoshitaka Damn Crystal. I was gonna come, gonna come back, gonna come, it's gonna come back, and then that's when I go. Don't go. I'm about to say, if you don't know what's in there, don't go in there. Light crystal. go back up and grab that item I just felt like this is where we were supposed to go oh my goodness I don't trust that at all what's this a den key what happens if I hit this? Oh, snap. Where's, where's Yoshiki? Yoshiki, do you see anything behind us? Yoshiki, hey, Yoshiki. Tadashi, what's wrong? Yoshiki's not here. Yoshiki, where are you? Say something! Kishinuma, say something, please! 
Where could he have gone? If we were to get separated here. What do we do, Satoshi? We should head back for now. Now Kuan's gone. Yosuke! Yosuke! Damn it, where did he go? If you're screwing around, I'm gonna be mad! Hurry up and get out of here! Hurry up and get out here! He listened for a response, but heard absolutely nothing. Save for a heavy pulsating sound that echoed through our heads like ringing after a loud concert. Naomi. Are you all right, Naomi? Yeah, but can I hold on to your skirt? Your shirt? You bet. Don't let go. You should do the same, Miss Kuan. Miss Kuan? No, Miss Kuan? Miss Kuan's gone now, too. She was here just a second ago. Sarushi, that voice. Yoshiki! Yoshiki, where are you? Sarushi! Atsuka! I can't tell, there's too much echo. I heard it from over there, come on. Don't let go of my hand, Naomi. Yoshiki! Ishinuma streams of pain sporadically punctuated the silence. That gate just opened on its own, huh? An uneasy feeling ran through me, manifesting itself as I shudder. Satoshi and I cautiously entered the cell, though we both remained close to the threshold. From there, he shone his light inside. It was a tiny cell with red runic letters written all over the wall. And standing all the way in the back was Miss Kuan. With wide, frightful eyes, as she was staring directly at us. Sensei! As Satoshi lost his footing, nearly toppling over, the floor was extremely slippery. <laughs> Took me a second, but I realized what he was reacting to. Miss Kuan wasn't watching us. She wasn't seeing anything anymore. Her body wasn't standing under its own weight, but rather impaled in place with four wooden spears. She was gone. The substance Satoshi had slipped on was the blood pooling on the ground from her now lifeless body. I turned around to see Yoshiki dead as well. His thread sliced and his tongue ripped out. Satoshi, we need to get out of here. We need to get out. Satoshi. I looked down and I was still holding Satoshi's hand. But that's all that remained of him. The rest of his body was gone. That's an anime reference. That, that's a horse party anime reference. That's hard. I dropped Satoshi's hand and ran out of the cell in a panic. Without his flashlight, the only thing I could see was a distant light. No, no, I can't take this anymore. My voice was trembling, my feet unstable, my mind a blank. All I could do was run. That was the only thing left for me. The source of the light was a solitary bulb in another small oh cell. God. Dang. A bear trap is crazy. That's crazy. Immediately upon entering, however, I found myself caught in a bear trap. It closed on my ankle, which triggered a cord. That pulled me into the air, hanging me upside down from my now critically injured leg. The feeling was excruciating as my entire body weight was pulling the steel blades deeper and deeper into my ankle. I kept moaning and screaming as I swung there, hoping someone, hoping to capture someone's attention, but no one came. And there seemed to be no easy way to free myself. It hurt so much. Sadoshi!
I needed to conserve my energy to save my screams for when I knew they'd be heard. Or at least that's what the little part of my mind that was still functioning kept telling me through all the internal anguish and searing trauma. But no one was coming, that much was certain. I had to do something to escape from this agony. Though it went against every instinct of my body, I bit my lip and forcefully contorted myself in a last ditch attempt to reach my ankle. Unfortunately, my hands just wouldn't reach. And on top of that, I could hear and very much feel cracking as my ankle bent under the force of the steel jaws. I lost the willpower to maintain such a painful posture. My body fell back into an upside vertical position and the force of the sudden fall caused me to start swinging more. It still blazed were merciless. Tears were flowing from my eyes, drooling from my mouth and blood from my ankle. My head was going blank under the intense pain. Then the worst part was, there was absolutely nothing I could do. I was completely and utterly helpless. Help! Please, somebody save me! I screamed. I saw people look like middle of a villager surround me. They were looking straight ahead as though they were intentionally averting their eyes from my suffering. Expressions on their face were somehow very off. What I was seeing was an otherworldly vision. It was neither heavenly host nor the world I knew. I had absolutely no idea where I was anymore nor what was happening to me. The next moment a violent crashing sound echoed through my brain. My field of vision began to shake and turn upside down as I lapsed into unconsciousness. I couldn't make out exactly what it was, but something like a crowbar came at me with tremendous force. That was a good guess. Every bone in my body vibrated, and I could feel some of them grinding together under the sudden impact. It was not pleasant. The vibration only lasted a moment, however, but the ground was now approaching and fast. With a thud, my vision spun. I could see the feet of the villagers surround me on all sides along with my own lifeless body, limp arms draped across the ground. This was immediately followed by blood pouring down before my eyes like a waterfall and then nothing. Oh, here we go. Dang, I wish I would've saved first. Here we go. Ah, right, we're now in the den. I don't know. Put the dark one. Put the light one. Oh, it's gone. Oh, the gremlin! Ah. Ah. What is it doing here? Go away! What's wrong? There was totally something behind me right now. The Toshi flashed his light in the direction Kishinuma had indicated, but there was simply nothing there. Seriously? That door just open, huh? Each one of us was racked with apprehension. We slowly approached the room. Naomi, have you seen have you seen any other visions of the gremlins since earlier? Uh-uh, not one. Okay, remember, anything can happen in here, so stay right behind me. I will, but please be careful, Satoshi. Don't worry. What's in here? I wonder. Yoshiki, you and the others keep an eye on things outside. Whoa, whoa, are you planning? Are you seriously planning to go in alone? It's better than all of us putting ourselves in harm's way. Well, yeah, I guess that's true, but I mean, I'll. No, you won't. I'll see what's going on in there and come right back out. Fine. 
Sadashi, make sure you get out of there at the first sign of trouble, all right? Ain't you supposed to be the one good with ghosts and spirits and stuff? Shouldn't you be going in there, Miss Kuan? My man, the smell in here is the smell is just as awful in here. Those chairs make it look like a solitary confinement room or something. Yuka. Yuka, I wouldn't trust that. Yuka, what did I? Yuka, it's me. Hang in there. What's going on? Satoshi, I would not trust this. Is Yuka in there? What's wrong? Did something scary happen to you? S say something, Yuka. It was almost as if she'd forgotten how to speak. Something was clearly very wrong. Yuka. Let's just get her out of here for now, Satoshi. Yeah, come on, Yuka, get on my back. No. So Satoshi so crouched down so Yuka could ride him piggyback, but she simply wouldn't budge. Satoshi, stay down. You think you can carry her? I don't trust this. Yuka, hang in there. This isn't Yuka, bro. Yuka never not shuts up. Yuka's always yapping away. This is really strange. The entrance was this way, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Nothing but a wall here now, though. Look there. This wall's moving. This is bad. If this way, we'll be caught easily. Everybody run. What the hell? Come on, let's go. No! Dang, I almost had it. I almost had it. The thing about Korra's party is like, sometimes there looks like there's an opening between two objects and it isn't. So it's kind of confusing. And they do that on purpose. I know they do. They do that on purpose so that we lose a lot. Ah, oh, my leg's asleep. This is not a good time for my leg to fall asleep. Not when I have to focus on what's, what I'm doing. Okay. Go this way, this way, and then this way. And then this way, uh, through here, through here. There we go, I got it. Oh. If we get wedged in, does that mean we're trapped here? I think it's more likely we'll be squished. We need to find an exit on the double. I see a light over that way, come on. Right behind you. Sadoshi, the hallway is closing in too quickly. Let's take cover in here. Are we trapped? Yes. But we were on the verge of getting crushed, so this seems like a better alternative. There's no way the wall's gonna keep closing in like that, right? A tremendous wave of anxiety washed over all four of us. As we were trying to figure out what to do next, I found myself tripping over a sharp stone by my foot. It was the shape of an arrowhead. I wonder what this is. Hey, Satoshi, shine your light over here again. Back a little, there. Looks like it goes somewhere. Yeah, it might be our only ticket out of this room. But how do we get up that high? Even if we stood on our tiptoes, we couldn't possibly reach it.
Satoshi was scared stiff by a sudden voice right by his ear. He flashed his light, but there was no one to be seen. What the? It's Yuka! Ow! My eye! It hurts! Nami! Nami, are you okay? I'm seeing something! What is this? You are. What do you see? Someone's back. I knew it! I knew it! You're back! Woo! Yuka's eyes went completely black as she latched all her weight onto Satoshi. Her face was no longer her own, but that of the gremlins. Satoshi! Yuka's... Satoshi! She's heavier. Who the hell are you? Sachi Shinazaki. Gremlin Shinazaki. I was Sachiko's older twin sister. The black eyed Yuka began to speak while clinging uncomfortably on a Satoshi's back. A vanishing twin. I've heard cases where two twins are conceived, but one dies in the womb and the other one absorbs it. I was eaten by Sachiko and Mommy's tummy and erased from existence. Only my teeth remained. They were by my sister's heart, but when then the doctors went and took them out. Isn't that awful? It seems so unfair for only her to be born safely. I want to go out into the world too, but I couldn't go out on my own, so I looked for a human I could wear, only they all died too fast so I was stuck. Not this girl though, she's perfect, she doesn't break even with me inside. Uh. While the possessed Yuka was speaking all this from Satoshi's back. Satoshi's carefully and discreetly poked Miss Kuwan in the side to get her attention. Here, Miss Kuwan. Those are. Satoshi's outstretched hands were two baby teeth. They were the teeth he'd taken from the class rep earlier. Take them, please. He didn't speak these words with his mouth, but rather with his eyes. Unfortunately for him, Sachi seemed to have caught on. The gremlin seemed to have caught on. And my first, first time will be a sibling murder. With that, she began strangling Satoshi. Yuka, stop! No, this is... Let go of him, Yuka! Shit, I can't loosen her grip. How the hell strong is she? Please stop this gremlin! And just like that, she stopped. Or rather, the spiritual aspect of her vanished from our sight. She disappeared, but why? Yuka, snap out of it! Don't die. Oh, Yuka's fighting it. No! Stop my hands! Yuka, damn it. You can do it, Yuka. Release your hands! If this keeps up, Satoshi won't make it.
I clutched my left eye and collapsed to the ground. This was accompanied by a sudden bloody splash from Sachi's left eye as well. By the gremlin's left eye as well. Accented by an all-black eyeball falling from its socket to the ground. <laughs> Satoshi's throat rang and rattled as she quickly inhaled as much air as his lungs could take. <laughs> My body twitched and I continued holding my eye with one hand. The the other hand then bore the arrowhead I'd used, now coated in blood and viscera. Uh, Did you do this? What were you thinking? Satoshi! How's Satoshi? Don't worry, Satoshi and Yuka are both fine. Thank God. She held her own neck in her hands and her body writhed and convulsed. Her eyes rolled back into her head, giving an almost supernatural or possibly subhuman appearance. Yuka! Dame! Stop Kishinuma! Yuka Get her Dame! arms! Look at Kishinuma immediately pinned her arms, doing his best to keep her still. Her school at this stuffed the hand towel in her mouth. <laughs> oh, she mad! Suddenly, the gremlin appeared next to Miss Kuan and grabbed the Ever After Stone before anyone knew what was happening. No, let go! I won't let you have them! Dang, she punched her! Yuka closed her eyes and fell dead silent. The gremlin was gone as well, and his stillness descended upon the entire room. Damn! The hell's her deal? <laughs> Naomi! <laughs> Naomi! Your eye! Naomi. It's okay. If that's what it takes to save you, it's a small price to pay. Besides, that eye was starting to give me the creeps anyway. May I take a look? Miss Kuan opened my eyelid and stared intently at my injured eye. This was not a comfortable thing for her to do. You're lucky. Your cornea isn't damaged. That's a relief. The white area has been cut, but your vision should be fine once it heals. You want to apply pressure. Started my time with crime. Started my ground with crime faster. My fault. You want to apply pressure for now, though. Hey, look! The exit came down. Damn it! You're always taking things just that little bit too far. Here, I'll carry Yuka. Satoshi, you'll lend Nakashi my hand. All right, Naomi. I know it hurts, but do you think you can go on? Yeah, I'm fine. Why must innocent children like this be forced to suffer so much? Miss Kuan surveyed the room with a general look of deep concern on her face. Uh-uh! As soon as this music came on, I knew something was about to happen. Shit, it's her! We all fixed our gazes on the gremlin who stood before us, cradling her eye. Damn it, what are we supposed to do now? Gremlin, take a look at this! It's one of the gremlin's baby teeth. Shinazaki brought them here. Miss Kuan crushed the tooth between her fingers until it was nothing little more than a fine powder. <laughs> Miss Kuan is really something else. 
She then opened her mouth and ate it. She thinks she keys me for real. <gasps> Yo! Was that, was that a foreshadow? Was that a foreshadow? Oh, that's crazy. If that was intentional, if keys me, if the keys me chapter tooth was an intentional foreshadow to this, that's crazy. She then opened her mouth and ate it. She stuck it in and swallowed. Miss Kuan. Kremlin, you'll never be born. This world is beyond your reach. It is an unfortunate fate, but it is your fate nonetheless. Return now to your mother's womb. If you don't shut your... <laughs> you can come back after you've been reborn. The gremlin disappeared and the stillness descended upon the room once more. What did you do? I trapped the gremlin within my body. She seemed to have mistaken me for her mother, so luring her in was easy. Now though, we really need to be going. We have to return to Shinazaki and I. Ms. Kuan looked down at her wristwatch as if for emphasis. The seconds on it were steadily counting down, having just dipped below 3600. That's the end of the chapter. Yo, man, this game has got my penis immensely erect. Oh my goodness. This might really just be my favorite game now, bro. Unless this ending is just complete like horse water, this game might end up being my favorite game ever. The first course party was already my favorite game ever. And I'm liking this a lot more than I like the first one. But peace out guys, I love y'all. Tap into chapter 10 next time on corpse party blood drive apply pressure starting my crown with